All right, so what we're going to do on 18 and 19 is actually write the equations. All right. And in order to do this, what we first need to do is determine all the different boundaries. So I'm going to highlight each section um, with a different color so that way we can distinguish on our equations what goes where. So I'm going to just start over here and I'm going to put the, the one to the furthest left. I'm going to put my condition there. Then I'll put the one in the middle and then I'll put the one on the far right just kind of underneath it. All right, so we've got an idea where those things all go. Now, um, what we're looking at here is we're looking at x boundaries. All right, so I've got one there. I've got one here for the yellow section. They're bound that way. And then I also have a boundary right there. Okay. So for the blue section, if I look at this a little more closely, I can see that right there where x is negative 5 is going to be my boundary. And because it's an open circle, it's going to be just less than, because it goes to the left, of negative 5. So that's the boundary for that one. The yellow one, since it's bounded on both the 0 and 3, and I have two closed circles, it's going to be if from 0 is less than or equal to x, which is less than or equal to 3. And then this one is bounded at x equals 7 and greater than. And since it's an open circle again, it's just going to be greater than 7. So there's the boundaries. Now it's just a matter of writing the equations. This first one's pretty simple. It's a, it's a horizontal line. It crosses right there at where y equals negative 9. And so that's my equation for the first one, just negative 9. The slope is 0 for a horizontal line. All right. For this next one, my y-intercept is 4. Now I have to find my slope. So if I, go, um, if I go from here and I go up, that, went, that was up 2. And then over to this point is over another 2 because it goes um, the, the grids go by 2s. That's up 2 over 2. So 2 over 2 which is just 1. So I could write 1x or just x plus 4 for the second one. The part that's going to be tricky is the last one because we don't know what the y-intercept is. What I can do, though, is I can extend that line, hopefully well, and put it right on there and try to see exactly where it's going to hit. And little tricky, but I'm going to go with, I'm going to go with the y-intercept being negative 3 right there, okay? So when I come over to here, I'm going to say the y-intercept is negative 3. Now I have to try to figure out the slope. And what I would say is I go up 1 over 1. Um, but I guess the other thing is, is if I use this point here, this is this is the tricky part because I don't exactly know I have a point. I think I have a point there. Um, this would be up two over three. So you could go either way with it. If you think this point is the one you want to use and you want to go up one, right one then your slope's 1. If you use the open circle point and then where the arrowhead is, then it could be 2 thirds. So it really kind of depends on which points you use. And so what you need to know is that for a test or quiz, there'll be no doubt which points to use. Right? In this case, there is some leeway. And so just to make uh, life a little bit easier, I'm going to use the arrowhead as a point, and I'm going to use just so I'm positive, and so I'm going to say um, up to right 
Oh, no, that's not three. Sorry. No, that's fine. Because I went halfway. That's also two. So whether it's those two points, never mind. I made it more confusing than it needed to be. Um, or if I went up one over one. Oops. One and one. So the slope is one. Okay. Either way. I, I just miscounted that. I was counting that as three instead of two. So, yes, it should still be slope one, which means that's x. All right, let's go through the 